Hi everyone, and welcome to my bite-sized review and discussion of Kirby's Dream Buffet for the Nintendo Switch. In this video, I'll be offering my thoughts on the game and talking through the key features. Regardless of whether or not you're a Kirby fan, I think you're in for a real treat with this one, so please stay tuned. Kirby's Dream Buffet is an adorably charming party game released exclusively as a digital download in honor of Kirby's 30th anniversary. The game finds Kirby who, in Nintendo's words, is quote, bumping, battling, and boosting his way to sweet victory as you roll him around and eat as many strawberries as possible in a fast-paced, food-themed clash. The more strawberries you eat, the bigger the Kirby and the better your final position. Although I admittedly haven't played many main title Kirby games, from the moment I saw this one's trailers start popping up on Nintendo's Instagram, I was totally hooked. The concept itself really excited me, and the food-themed environment sealed the deal. I knew that regardless of whether or not the actual gameplay would impress, the visuals were enough to keep me entertained. And after playing a good number of rounds myself, I am pleased to say that neither aspect left me disappointed. Let's talk through the main game options. In the game's main menu, you'll find three primary modes. Battle mode, online mode, and local play mode. Battle and local play mode are both great for larger groups looking to play together, whereas online mode gives freedom to solo Kirby's looking to play with strangers. For the sake of this video, we'll be focusing on online mode, as that was the one that I played the most as a solo player. Online mode gives you the option of linking up with online friends via a password, or simply jumping into a randomized lobby of other players looking to battle, which is what I have done throughout my playthroughs. So now you're probably thinking, okay, cool, but how do we play the game? In terms of general structure, the game goes as such. Once in a match, you're presented with a menu of the day's food courses, or rather, the obstacle courses and minigames you'll be competing in throughout your battle. Once the initial countdown finishes, you're thrust into a breakneck blur of alternating races and minigames to eat speed-inducing strawberries and utilize the copy food abilities to power up your Kirby and beat the competition. The final course of every menu is the Battle Royale, which finds you ramming yourself into the opposing player's almost bumper cart style in an attempt to steal the remaining strawberries and come out on top as the heaviest Kirby of them all. The switch between the different rounds can be a bit jarring at the beginning, but as long as you follow the golden rule of eating as many strawberries as possible and trying not to fall off the stage, you're usually in pretty good shape. If you aren't so lucky in the strawberry eating department, however, you aren't out of luck yet, as the game offers extra point boosts at the final weigh-in for randomized extra categories, such as the player who's eaten the most blueberries, broken the most cookie walls, or even hovered up in the air for the most time. This additional push is sometimes what makes or breaks the winner, so feel free to pick your way to play. It just might reward you. If you find yourself the biggest and best Kirby of them all by the end, or even if you just scrape by in last place, you'll be awarded with a buff of points to your gourmet rank, which basically just serves as a skill or experience level in addition to a handful of extras. These extras include new Kirby customization options, new minigame and race course maps, additional music tracks to use as background in your races, and even character treats which are basically small, cookie-like spheres and squares which you can use to decorate your main hub's layered cake with Kirby Universe memorabilia. Although these character treats in particular may seem trivial to collect and place upon your cake, I think they're a sweet celebration of Kirby's anniversary and a unique idea by the developers to honor the series in an interactive way. I know these winnables aren't exactly a major reward, but I really enjoyed the incentive of winning new costumes and colors for my little Kirby. From the whipped cream and Carmouth cake hats to all of the vibrant color options, this small aspect of choice really gives the game a fun touch. You can keep track of your collection of prizes by accessing the rewards menu, which presents current and future wins in the order of unlocking. So if you're really itching for that ice cream themed course, and God, I know I am, you'll know when you get it. If you're looking for a more slow paced sandbox experience, the game offers a free rolling mode that might just be perfect for you. 
It's a large, interconnected sampling of all of the game's courses interspersed with all of the copy food abilities for you to try at your leisure. I think this is a great feature not only for the purpose of new players getting used to the controls and honing in on their skills in a controlled environment, but also simply for the opportunity to do as the name says. Free roll around as slow or fast as you'd like and really take in all of the amazing, mouthwatering courses in a detailed way. I can easily see myself jumping into a free roll mode after a stressful day and just rolling around with some good music or a podcast in the background to unwind. And I think that any casual gaming fan, Kirby loving or not, would also really enjoy that. Now, while I have sung my praises of Kirby's Dream Buffet, reviews of the game have been decidedly mixed. With Metacritic scoring a composite 66 out of 100, GameSpot a 6 out of 10, and Eurogamer a 3 out of 5. Criticism centers mainly around the lack of overall varied gameplay, the repetitive nature of the matches, the inherent issues with online connectivity, and the fact that only two players can play locally at a time together which is admittedly a curious limitation considering that it is a party game at its core. I think we can all agree that a party is typically made up of more than two people, right? I validate all of the internet's criticisms of the game as it certainly isn't a perfectly built experience in every aspect. However, I think I find my love for this title in the act of taking it for what it is. It's a simple, straightforward party game decorated inch to inch in frosting and sprinkles. Does it do anything particularly revolutionary? Not really. Will it be your go-to racing game, exceeding maybe the Switch port of Mario Kart? Most likely not. But is it a cute, simple, breath of fresh air to reach for when you need a quick pick-me-up? Absolutely. If you're in the mood for a casual and colorful game to have on deck for those tired, stressful days, Kirby's Dream Buffet costs $15 for a digital download on the Nintendo Switch eShop. If you can make it through a round without craving a piece of cake, that is. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. In the meantime, let me know if you'd like me to try more Kirby games. I've got my eye on Kirby and the Forgotten Land, so maybe one of these days I'll take you guys along and give it a try. Until then, bye!